Hello everybody, I hope all of you are doing well. I am Dr. Salah Shaheen, Professor of General Surgery, Kostelaini Hospital, Cairo University, Egypt. Welcome to my channel, Clinical Surgery Cases for Medical Students who are studying general surgery, both pre- and postgraduate. In this video series, I'm going to present some common surgery cases in a simple and illustrative way that is easy to recall back. Let us start by part one, general, series three about basic local examination. Before you start watching videos in my channel about clinical surgery cases, you must master the following basic physical examinations. Number one, how to examine a swelling, being the most common general surgical referral to the outpatient clinics. Number two, how to examine an ulcer. Also, you have to know how to examine patients presenting with sinuses or fistulae. Lastly, you have to know how to examine and describe a scar or keloid if there is. Now, let's start the general swelling sheet 1.3.1. .1. This is episode 1. Different items like history taking, examination, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, etc. should be covered. Let us start by the important general remarks. A swelling is defined as an abnormal eminence affecting only one aspect of a region. While a swollen limb, for example by edema or lymphedema, is defined as an abnormal eminence of the entire circumference of the limb. Inflammatory swellings do not usually gain large size, as they usually soften and burst, while malignant swellings can reach large size. Another important note is that cystic degeneration in chronic granulomatous diseases is central, but in malignant tumors it occurs in an eccentric manner. A tumor or neoplasm is a growth of new cells which proliferate independent of the body needs. Notice that not all the swellings are tumors and not all the tumors present as swellings. For example, antibioma of the breast, which is due to improper management of breast abscess by antibiotics, presents as a swelling, but it is not a tumor while duct papilloma of the breast, though a tumor, doesn't present as a swelling. Benign tumors proliferate slowly with little evidence of mitosis. And malignant tumors proliferate fast with evident mitosis and invasiveness to the surrounding tissue. Lastly, sarcomas usually affect young people, while carcinomas occur mostly in the elderly. But the reverse is quite common. Etiology or classification of swellings can be discussed under the famous five groups, mainly congenital, traumatic, inflammatory, neoplastic, and others. Congenital swellings are generally present at birth, for example, a congenital hernia, hemangioma, especially the cavernous type, cystic hygroma, and meningitis. Few congenital swellings may appear later, like branchial cyst, dermoid cyst, thyroblastal cyst. Although they present since birth, but they need time to fill by secretion. As regards the traumatic swellings, they usually develop after a history of trauma, like hematoma, fracture with displacement, 
dislocation, rupture of a muscle. Torsion testis is a special traumatic swelling. Inflammatory swellings may be acute or chronic. Usually, the acute inflammatory swellings are non-specific, while the chronic ones are usually specific. Examples of acute non-specific inflammatory swellings are cellulitis, acute abscess. Acute inflammatory swellings present with the five cardinal manifestations of inflammation, which are calor or local hotness, rupert or local redness, tumor or swelling, doula or pain, and functional issue, which is loss of function of the part affected. The chronic inflammatory swellings may be non-specific like chronic abscess, but mostly they are specific like tuberculous and syphilitic lesions. A rapidly growing sarcoma, for example osteosarcoma, may mimic an acute inflammatory swelling, but Edema, actic fever, acute lymphadenitis, and leukocytosis which shift to the left are in favor of acute inflammatory process. Actic fever, fluctuation, or pitting edema over a red area are suggestive of past formation. The neoplastic swellings may be benign. The common benign tumor is LIBO. Malignant tumor may be of epithelial origin like carcinoma or mesodermal origin like sarcoma. The last group, which is the others, include a variety of swellings like metabolic, degenerative, hormonal, vascular, blood diseases, etc. Now it's time to move on to basic items of clinical swelling sheet. Taking a good history is mandatory. History details will be discussed somewhere else. This video will focus only on swelling history. Let us start. At first, it is better to show you how to present a swelling similar to that shown in this image. This male patient complains of a single swelling at his left upper back, he noticed it about four years ago, and it was the size of a small olive, and now it reached the size of a big orange. The swelling is painless, apart from some discomfort on lying on his back. He never experienced any history of trauma to that side. He neither has any other lumps in his left armpit, nor elsewhere in the body. Another way of presentation is as follows. The number is single, the site is left upper back, the onset is insidious, the course is slowly progressive, and so on. Though this way is correct, but it is not the best way to present the history of such a swelling. Returning back to the standard textbook method of history taking, at first, you have to ask about the number of swelling, whether it is single or more than one, that's to say, multiple swellings. The commonest multiple swellings are lymphadenopathy. Next is multiple sepaceous cysts. Other multiple swellings include multiple lipomata, multiple neurofibromatosis, multiple myelomas, multiple extrosis, etc. Next, ask about the site of the swelling. You have to determine the side affected, whether it is right or left side, and the location of the swelling. This is very helpful in making anatomical diagnosis. For example, the common swelling affecting the front of the neck is thyroid gland enlargement or goiter. Swellings affecting the side of the neck are mostly lymphadenopathy or enlargement of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. Location of the swelling also may help in making pathological diagnosis. For example, carbuncle commonly affect the nape of the neck or the back.
Sequestration de la cyst occurs at the lines of fusion. In the face, it may be external angular or internal angular dermite. Also, there is post-auricular or pre-auricular cysts. In the neck, it may be supersternal, submental, or sublingual dermite. Another example is dorsal ganglion. This is commonly affect the dorsum of the hand or the wrist and also the dorsum of the foot. Next, inquire about onset cause and duration. You may ask, how long is the lump present? Or, when was the lump first noticed? A big difference exists between the two questions. The patient may first notice a lump, for example, about three months ago, while the lump had been there for months or even years before the patient had noticed. So don't say the swelling first appeared three months ago when you mean it was first noticed three months ago. The onset may be sudden, like a joint dislocation following a stiff trauma, or Acute onset of a lump means development of it over a few minutes, like hematoma, angioedema, or may develop over a few hours or days, as in acute inflammatory swellings. Most of the swellings are of insidious onset. Another good question as regards onset is, what made the patient discover the lump? The patient may say, I felt or saw it when washing. The person may say, I noticed the lump on looking into a mirror, or I had a pain and found the lump when I felt the painful area. The patient may say, someone else, like a doctor, a relative, or a friend, had noticed it and told me about it. All these are considered accidental discovery of a swelling and not a sudden onset. One of the common presentation of a breast lump is that the patient may say, I found the lump on self-examination. In general, the swellings are either appear spontaneously or on top of a pre-existing lesion. For example, keloid on top of a scar, also a malignant melanoma on top of a nevus or a birthmark. A swelling may follow a history of previous trauma, like a keloid developing on top of ear piercing. Notice that congenital swellings are either appear at or near birth, for example, exomphalus, congenital hernia, etc. Or may appear later even up to the age of 20s, like the polycystic kidney, ankyl cyst, paraglossal cyst. All these need time for the cyst to be filled by fluids. As regards the cause of a swelling, you may ask the following question. Has the lump changed since it was first noticed? You can suggest progressive cause. When the lump has got bigger, this may be rapidly progressive over a few days as in acute inflammatory swellings, or it may take a few weeks or months as new blasts and chronic inflammatory swellings. The course may be regressive, which means the lump has got smaller. This is commonly occurred in inflammatory, traumatic, or allergic lumps. Of course, this regression occurs after a period of progression. Most of the chronic lumps are of a stationary course. A special pattern is the fluctuating course. For example, the intermittent course is seen in patients with physiologic goiters. Another type is remissions and exacerbations, typically seen in patients with primary toxic goiters. In chronic submandibular cellulitis, a swelling appears on eating food, especially those with bitter taste, and this swelling is associated with pain. These are usually relieved or disappear one to two hours after eating. The swelling may show recent change in size, and this is usually suggestive of secondary changes, like hemorrhogenesis, Secondary degeneration of the mass on top of acute inflammatory, and this usually takes a few days, 
And lastly, malignant transformation, which usually takes few weeks. If the lump is suspected to be a hernia, you should ask that the lump ever disappear. A hernia disappears on lying down and reappears on standing or straining, I mean coughing. Another important question is, have the lump ever disappeared or healed? This is to diagnose recurrent swellings, like the dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, dysmoid tumors, etc. An important question you should ask is, what symptoms does the lump cause? A lump may be painful, disfiguring, interfering with movement, breathing, swallowing, and much more. Describe the history of each symptom carefully. Let's start by pain. Refer to general sheet to know how to analyze pain. In general, acute inflammatory swellings are associated with pain. The pain usually precedes the onset of the swelling. Neoplasms are usually painless and less complicated. Most patients expect cancer to be painful, and some patients may ignore a lump because it doesn't hurt them. And this may explain why some patients present pain. Painful swelling may be the main presenting symptom in a patient with sarcoma, especially those with high grade and rapidly growing ones. An important item in the history of a swelling is its relation to trauma. Trauma may just attract the patient's attention to the presence of a swelling. For example, a lady may palpate a lump in her breast after receiving a minor trauma like bumping into something hard. On the other hand, a definite mechanical trauma is responsible for acute traumatic swellings like hematoma, dislocation, fracture, etc. A special type of trauma is a major psychic or emotional trauma that may be the exciting or the activating cause for Graves' disease. Another point of interest is to ask whether the swelling is related to change of posture. For example, a hernia appears on standing and may disappear on lying down. Varicose veins of the lower limbs disappear on lying flat with leg elevation. In females, you have to ask about the relation of the swelling to pregnancy, lactation, and menses. This is very important in taking history of a breast lump. Physiologic goiter appears with menses. For any swelling, having a cavity which is connected to a body cavity, like a hernia, meningocele, laryngocele, etc., will increase in size on straining. In chronic calcular submandibular sialadenitis, the swelling and pain are related to food intake, especially those with bitter taste. The next item is other swellings and order of appearance. You may ask the patient the following question. Have you ever had other lumps, whether nearby or elsewhere? This may represent a swelling among multiple ones or there may be a similar swelling, for example, a lump in the other breast like lobular carcinoma. Another example is hernia elsewhere due to mesoderma defect. Note that inflammatory and malignant swellings are followed by enlargement of the regional lymph nodes. A large malignant lymph nodes may be followed by a swollen catchment area by edema caused by venous obstruction or lymphedema due to lymphatic obstruction. Lastly, malignant tumors may be followed by the appearance of distant metastasis in bones, liver, lungs, etc. A point of interest for swellings occurring at the sides of lymph nodes for example, the side of the neck, the armpit, or groin. You have to ask about possible primary foci in the related catchment areas, for example, an inflammatory lesion, soreness, 
or a malignant clump. Next, ask about the effect of the swelling on the nearby structures. There are different mechanisms to produce the following effects. This includes compression of the surrounding or maybe infiltration. Another way is to displace or to bring the nearby structure. Involvement of the main vein leads to distal edema presenting by a swollen part or by varicosities. If the artery is obstructed, distal color changes, traffic changes, etc. may become evident. Nerve infiltration results in distal deformity, releases, paralysis, traffic changes, etc. Dysphagia and dyspnea are examples when a large or retrosternal biter has its effect on the esophagus or on the trachea. Swelling near a joint may interfere with the range of its move. Next step in history of a swelling is to ask about the associated symptoms. Pain is by far the most important associated symptom, and usually the patient presents with this complaint. Actually, it is the pain that brings the patient to the physician. Patients may not give a history of other symptoms, so you have to ask relevant questions to identify any symptom associated with the lung. For example, inquire about associated fever. Its presence suggests infection. Hematoma is associated with fever due to blood absorption. If the fever is hectic, the possibility of acute abscess must be considered. Hodgkin disease and renal cell carcinoma are associated by a peculiar fever. For further details, refer to the general sheet, part 1, series 1. If there is weight loss, you have to think of active tuberculosis or malignancy. For the swellings of the endocrine glands, ask about disturbances of function. For example, symptoms suggestive of hyperfunctioning thyroid gland occur in toxic goiter. For any swelling anywhere in the body, don't forget to ask about the three important items. Mainly, number one, constitutional symptoms. That's to say, fever, headache, malaise, anorexia, etc. Number two, history suggestive of TB toxemia. That's to say, night sweat, night fever, cough, hemopsis, etc. And lastly, ask about history suggestive of distant metastasis. The last item in taking the history of a swelling is the previous management. Inquire about the investigations done and present the results if available, especially biopsy. Check if previous lung removal was done to diagnose the recurrence, which may be explained by incomplete excision of the mass, the presence of malignancy, or a specific pathology, for example, tuberculosis. There are special tumors which are known to recur after surgical excision, like dermatofibrosarcoma pretuberans and desmoid tumor or budget recurrent fibroid. At the end, an important notification must be declared. The personal history, the social history, the family history, and the past history are integral items that should be included in dealing with patient assessment. But all are beyond the scope of this video that concentrates on alum history. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was simple clear and to the point. If you feel such that, please give a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to watch more such videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified whenever I post a new video in my channel. 
See you next video and good luck.